happens and I'm like, yeah, it's just not gonna happen. So hey everyone, happy March. Super, super excited to be here. So many good things happening this month. <sighs> um, so for those of you, as we're just kind of like waiting for people to pop on, for those of you who do not know me, my name is Rachel Leah Gerson. I am a metaphysical practitioner and owner of Joy to Self, where I combine counseling techniques with psychic tools to help you understand yourself, your mental health, your psychic health, all of the above and more uh, better. Um, I see a couple people coming on. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being here. So if you haven't been here before, um, I just want to throw out the caveat here that this is not a live gallery reading, meaning that I, this isn't like a psychic reading thing. I don't, um, read, like answer psychic questions or anything like that. This is more um, an education platform. So this is a place for you to come on. Hey, Jesse, thanks for being here and ask any and all questions that you have about the psychic world. Um, how does it work? Uh, what is it about? It's also your chance to ask questions about metaphysics, about which is the psychic world, about um, mental health, about the intersection thereof, about um, and literally anything, numerology, astrology, energy work, energy ethics, like the list goes on. So this is the place to do it. Um, and if you see me shifting back and forth, it's because I'm looking at Facebook here, I'm looking at Instagram here. So I'm seeing both of you right now. Um, and the way that this works is that if you have a question, you can just pop it in the comment box on Facebook or on Instagram, and I will answer it live. And then after this video is finished, I will post it to YouTube within the next couple of days with timestamps, um, pointing to exactly when questions were asked. So it'll say, Say, for instance, at two minutes and 11, in 11 seconds, um, someone asked, um, how come I see auras or something like that? And then you can click on it and it'll bring you right to the Q&A for that question, which is perfect and cool and useful. So um, if you want to check out old Q&As as well to see what questions have already been asked and see the answers to those, you're welcome to do that too. Just check out, um, type in Doorway to Self on the search queue on um, YouTube. So that's about it. Um, also, the other thing is too, if you have anonymous questions that you want to send in, unfortunately, the window for that for today has closed, but I do do one of these every single month and um, you can just email them to me. Um, hey, Megan, thanks for being here. Um, or you can DM or PM them to me. So those are all options. Um, and I always start out by answering the at least one anonymous question first. Um, and so today, <laughs> the first question I'm going to answer is how do I learn more about astrology? And so the first, uh, the first place I'm going to refer, refer you to actually is um, I believe it was at the very end of the last Q&A as I answered pretty much this exact same question. Um, and I gave a ton of references and resources there that you can go to. Um, one of those references was for um, Mama Rose um, Liquid Astrology, which is so fantastic. And something that I did not tell you guys about last time is um, that she also has a Facebook group called Cream. Um, oh shoot, I wish I remembered what it stands for. It's Cosmic, uh, oh gosh, it's so good. Cosmic Remembrance, and I don't even remember, but it's really good. Um, Cream, and so if you are female, unfortunately this is a female only group, um, but if you're a female and you wanna learn more about astrology, um, in this Facebook group, she posts all sorts of um, informational videos about every single sign. So if you're like wanting to learn more about the signs um, of the Zodiac, uh, this is a really good reference. Um, and then also uh, she does new and full moon um, circles over Zoom as well, which are really wonderful <laughs> and helpful. And you can like talk through whatever you're feeling at that point in time. And she does a little bit of like astrological coaching to like show why you're feeling what you're feeling is matching up with the stars or the moon or, or whatever's going on. Um, and also it, it is a membership. I didn't mention that, but with the membership, you also, um, get a, 
uh, session with her every month as well as an astrologer. So she'll work with you through your personal chart, which is pretty dang cool. So I can't recommend this group enough. I'm in it right now. It's awesome. I'll be leaving pretty shortly here um, just because I'm honestly way too busy to be in there. But if you have the time and you're really dedicated to wanting to learn astrology, please go do it because it is awesome. It's just such an amazing space. Hey, Janae. Thanks for being here. Janie. I said your name wrong. Janie. <laughs> I don't know why I said it so strange. I think I did that last time too. Um, so I want to start out... Um, uh, by answering the second anonymous question here. Um, and oh, also, I will put the link when this video is done. I will put the link in here for that cream circle so that you guys can see um, what that is and easily access it. Um, so the second question that came in anonymously uh, that I want to answer is, and also if you're brand new here at any point in time, whether I'm in the middle of answering or not, you're welcome to pop your question in the comment box um, and I will get to it as soon as I'm done. So just so you know, there's no like timing thing there. You can ask whenever you want. Um, so somebody asked me today, uh, I'm going to give you the gist of it. The gist is what's going on in the month of March, um, like what are the energies, what kind of um, tools do we have to have in our toolbox to be working with um, this month, etc. And the very easy answer I can give you is uh, go to the blog, doorwaytosoft.com slash blog. I literally just um, a day and a half ago published the March energy forecast um, for you guys. So that is a resource that you now have. Um, I do these every single month. If you want to know when they're coming out, make sure you follow me on Facebook, on Instagram, at Doorway to Self. I always do a post about it and I always send out an email with the link to the article in it as well. So if you're not on the email list, get there too. All you have to do is go to the website, doorwaytoself.com and a little pop-up box will happen and you just type in your email and boom, you're good to go. So um, every single month I write one of these articles. They're <laughs> dense. Um, they're usually about four to six pages long. You don't have to read the whole thing, but it's a whole heck of a lot of information. So I talk about the general energy for the month and the astrological happenings for the month, what planets are shifting, the moon, um, what signs the moon is full and new in, what that means if there's a super, super moon or blue moon, um, if anything crazy is happening with the sun, blah, blah, blah. And then also all of the numerology, all of the numerolo numerological portal days, all of the tarot stuff that's going, I mean, they, it, like these articles are ridiculous. They take me hours to write. So please go read them. <laughs> um, so if you're wanting to know more about the energy this month, that's what's up. Um, but also something that I wrote in the article is that Basically, as I was tapping into it, I was understanding March almost as like having two separate parts to it. So it kind of feels like the beginning of the month is a little darker, right? So the end of February was pretty dark. It was pretty heavy. It was pretty dense. Um, and going into March, it feels like there's still that density and there's still that heaviness and there's still a little bit of that darkness. But it like it's I think I wrote something like it's like a fog that slowly lifts. Um, and so that's what we can expect. And so the beginning of the month um, and of course, it might be completely different for you. <laughs> so this is just kind of like the main collective energy that I've tapped into. Um, but yeah, so listen to your gut on that. If you're like, oh, but I feel so light and free, then go with that. Like, <laughs> that's great. You're helping to balance out the collective in that way. And we definitely need people to balance out. I sense there are a couple of you watching who are in that position. So, um, which may mean you flip flop also, but don't take my word for that because I really don't want you to just like manifest a dark part of the month for yourself also. So please make sure in the interest of ethics, please make sure to listen to your intuition on what you are experiencing right now as well, not just what Rachel has channeled for the collective and is now telling you about. Like that's, if you're not, <laughs> if you're not in that same place, there's nothing wrong with you. Your energetic ticker is not broken. Like you're just doing you. There need to be balancers every single time. Um, so... 
What I want to do, though, is, and, and by the way, I'm sensing also, and I may, ha I think I wrote this in the article, that this, um, this period, this kind of, like, darker period in March goes through, I'm sensing, like, pretty close to the, to the full moon, which is on the 9th, um, and then we'll be, like, basically completely over, um, around the 16th. Um, which is when Mercury goes direct again. If you don't know what that means, um, I'm not going to answer it because I've answered it a bunch of times before. So, um, just either check out old Q and A's and get that answer or, um, you can Google it. What is Mercury retrograde? Um, and I write a little bit up about it in the article as well. So, all resources for you. Okay, our card has fallen out. So what I'm going to do um, in this session, I've just really, uh, really enjoyed pulling cards for you guys the last couple months that we've done Q&A. Um, and so I was like, but I always did full moon pulls and what am I going to do this time? Um, and I was like, duh, it's the beginning of the month. So why not pull a card for March? <laughs> um, hey, Michelle, thanks for being here. Um, so that's what I'm doing. So the very, the very first, this very first card that I've pulled is going to be for like, what do we need to know for the beginning of the month? What do we need to know for this kind of like darker period, um, as we're in the midst of this heavy, sticky stuff and it's, it doesn't really feel sticky. It's more just heavy. It's more just dense. Um, so, um, so this comes from my absolute favorite deck. These are my babies. Um, this is the Wild Wisdom of the Fairies Oracle um, by Lucy Cavendish and Selena Fennick. So if you're interested, this was actually the first deck I ever bought for myself. So these, these are my babies. <laughs> um, and so this is interesting. You're going to take it how you will. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is a really interesting card. And we'll, we'll do some picking apart and pulling apart of this guy. So this is um, what we need to know for this darker, denser part, and it's fairy lovers. And it says, new love, courtship, romance, and falling in love. So I'm showing this to you guys uh, on Facebook <laughs> and on Instagram. So you guys have it. Okay. Um, And so... Basically, the way that I'm reading this card, um, oh, there are so many facets to this. Wow. Um, firstly, be careful of distraction. Okay, that's the first thing I'm going to say. It's important to remember, and I did not put this in this month's article, but it is in last month's article. So if you want to read about it, you're welcome to go back to February's. But uh, last month, the asteroid Juno, um, which is in charge of love, relationships, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, um, want retrograde. Uh, and it will be retrograde through May. So we're still under that influence. Um, and lots of things can happen within relationships with this influence. It can be a lot of like questioning your partner, questioning if you're in a relationship, questioning your partner, questioning whether you should be in a relationship, questioning like, are they doing enough? Are they giving enough? Are they the perfect person for me? Is this the one? Yada, yada. Um, so, and also like morals coming up, like do our values match, things like that. Um, things like infidelity can come up. So there can be a lot of trust issues. I mean, just all sorts of stuff. So there's that. Um, if you're single, there can also be this, um, questioning of like, what do I actually want in a relationship? Um, hey, Bobby, thanks for being here. Um, and, um, but there can also be this like really easy distraction with like romantic drama and that that can go either way whether you're single or not right so um just this juno retrograde stuff can have a lot to do with romantic distraction and i think that that is what this card is speaking to a lot of for this darkness is like make sure that you're not getting pulled into that and sucked into that um, and instead, I love this new love here, right? Um, so that can be interpreted, interpreted as like this new love that's, you know, enticing and whatever that's outside of yourself. But I really want to interpret this as like 
finding a new facet of love for yourself, um, finding a way to reconnect to parts of yourself that feel like they've been missing for a long time or that you want to bring back around in a new light. Um, and so, um, so I really, really want to reinforce that and, and like taking all of these words that you would normally associate with a second person or a fourth person if you're poly, I don't know, but like, you know, the words that you would normally associate with a re relationship outside of yourself, take them and associate them within, right? So that's how you can keep yourself afloat during this heavier time having new love for yourself, courting yourself, right? Like making these situations where you're creating rituals for yourself or you're just taking the time to enjoy yourself or you're making yourself a meal that's special or drawing yourself a bath or taking yourself out on a date, something like that. And I know that might sound cheesy, but um, really it's like, it's like deeply like what you would want from somebody else, like what you would want somebody else to do for you romantically and just like, be super romantic with yourself. Um, and it's gonna feel really weird at first. <laughs> I'm warning you, it's gonna feel super weird at first, um, but it's worth it and it's amazing. Um, and then falling in love with yourself all over again. Um, so uh, so yeah, that's, that's our heavy card. Um, and like I said, you might just, you might already have felt this fog lift. This might be like way in the past for you. You're like, oh, like that ended in February. I wish I knew this a week ago. Um, if that's you, awesome. Keep, keep it up. Keep doing this. Try it out. Maybe if you didn't try it before and you just like pushed through the heavy, um, for the greater collective, like I said, I feel this, um, lingering around, um, and to, and not really even like sna stagnantly. It, it feels more like, like I said, that lifting fog, right? And I feel like the fog is lifting until that full moon on the 9th um, for about half the collective and the other half the collective is like until the 16th when Mercury goes direct again. So, um, and then actually maybe not even 50-50 because there's still even another part that's going to linger on until, um, or wait, oh my gosh, what am I saying? I have my dates wrong. Mercury goes direct on the 9th, on the full moon. It said it goes back to Pisces on the 16th. So that's where I'm sorry. I apologize for that misinformation. That's what I meant to say is that when it goes back to the original sign that it was in when it turned retrograde, that's when the other part of the fog is going to lift. So I'm sorry if that was confusing for you. Hey, Ashley. I do need to do that. Yeah, you do. I love it. I made a romance flower essence for myself today. Jesse, that's amazing. I love that. So yes, so that's our heavy card. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pull a, a card for the lighter part of the month, just because it feels sequential um, to do that. Um, and then either towards the middle or towards the end of this q a i'm gonna do one for um like the overall theme of march what we need to kind of like know <laughs> um so uh this one comes from the and i'm sorry i didn't have the box for the other one but it comes from the what uh the wisdom of avalon oracle cards uh, and this is colette baron reed it's a really beautiful deck so I already feel lighter. <laughs> so shuffling for this. Okay, let's see what comes out. Um, there we are. And actually, two fell out. So I'm one of those is gonna be for. Oh nope, I lied. Three fell out. Um, so here's how I'm gonna read this. It's kind of funny. Um. The first one is going to be if you're already feeling that fog lift and you're like, woohoo, March is here, Earth sunshine, and everything's good, and that dark, heavy thing is gone, and now I feel good. Um, this card's for you. Um, and so what, <laughs> what you need to know is that it's time to go into spring cleaning mode, right? So all of the, so the card is the frog cleanse or er, cleaning house and releasing emotional baggage. That's that guy. Cleaning house and releasing emotional baggage. Um, and so, yeah, it's time to do some spring cleaning. We felt all the heaviness. 
we felt like this dirt basically piled on top of us and we're like where's the light help us peek through and then we get to the surface and it's like oh, okay i'm here now let me clean this up right so now that all the all the heavy stuff is over and gone it's time for you to like whip up like whip everything into shape clean everything up get everything ready boom done um, so that card's for you if, like, today or yesterday you were like, oh, that fog is lifted. I feel great. Okay, so this is for you. Um, if you're somebody who around the 9th-ish, around that full moon slash Mercury direct, um, you start to feel the fog lift then. Um, and the card for you is protection. Oh, you guys like that one. Yeah, protection. Um, and this makes total sense, right? Because Mercury is um, retrograde right now in the sign of Pisces, which is all about, and I normally don't get so astrologically thick with you guys, but I really feel like that's what you guys are craving. So that's what's coming out. Um, so, huh, so yeah, Mercury is retrograde in the sign of Pisces, which is all about learning our psychic boundaries, learning how we might be energetically communicating in unhealthy ways with people or connecting in unhealthy ways. And so when we come out of that, and then as the planet goes backwards even more into the sign of Aquarius, then we're looking at how are we connection, connecting with our own energy, with our own weirdness? Where are we miscommunicating with ourselves? Where are we not allowing ourselves to fully show up in the world? Where are we allowing others' judgments of us to um, stop us from being ourselves fully? And so this card is really important for you. If that fog lifts around the ninth for you, this is what you're needing likely is um, this extra layer of taking everything you've learned from those lessons and then bringing your essence. And if those, <laughs> you guys love that at all. Um, so for those of you who have worked with me before, you know that I say that the greatest psychic protection that you can have is being in touch with your own energy. And so learning these lessons of from Pisces, okay, where am I psychically miscommunicating or doing things that are harmful to myself energetically or to others, um, taking those lessons and mixing them with where is society stopping me from being myself or where are people close to me stopping or where am I stopping me from being myself, right? And taking those lessons together and then filling yourself up fully with who you are and being unapolog unapologetically you and just bringing yourself to the table, that is the ultimate protection. And that's the ultimate way to say, universe, I learned this lesson, right? So, um, that's for you guys. Again, if you felt like the fog lifted yesterday or the day before, this is you. If you felt like it lift, it, if you are going to feel <laughs> like it's lifting around the ninth, this is for you. So keep that in mind. Um, and you can always, like I said, I put this on YouTube. I put a timestamp. So if around the ninth, you're like, wait, wasn't that one of the dates she said when she pulled cards? What was that card again? You can always go back and look at it. Um, just to remind yourself. Um, this third card that fell out is what um, what you need to know if you feel like that fog is lifting for you around the 16th um, or later. Um, so this is for people who um, are needing Mercury to catch up back to where it was before, at least in the same sign it was when it went retrograde, um, and maybe even to the same degree, I don't know, so the 16th or later. Um, this is for you and your card is movement movement yeah um and so what i'm getting with this is like i'm feeling like there there has been a stuckness right and specifically in the realm of creativity especially in the in the realm of uh meekness or shyness or feeling like you're not quite sure where to go. Uh, there, there doesn't seem to be really a, a clear answer, a clear sign or any synchronicities around anything. Um, and so you're like, what the heck do I do? And so there's just this kind of like treading water feeling. Um, and there has been since Mercury run, retrograde or very close to that point um, around February 16. Um, so 
Um, this is like, as soon as that fog lifts, and you don't even really have to do anything for this card. This card is more of like an affirmation of like, okay, things are moving for you now. Like, that's it. That's all there is. So I hope that's helpful for you guys. Um, and then, like I said, towards the middle or end of this uh, q and I will pull another card um, just for like the energy of March in general. Okay, I'm seeing comments. I literally started my spring cleaning today too, and I do feel great. Oh, great. I'm glad to hear that. Um, sorted so much out today, cleaned the entire house up. Yeah, so clearly for both of you, you're you're both feeling this like, ooh, the fog lifted. March started, fog lifted, we're good. So that's cool. And also the other thing I wanna mention too is that some of you might feel this in waves as well. So you also might have all three of these cards apply to you. Um, and I personally, and I don't normally disclose things like this, but I personally do feel like I fall in that category of like, okay, I felt a little bit of the fog lift, like yesterday, felt that kind of lift, and then I felt it like drop again and be like, oh, this isn't as clear as I thought it was. And then like maybe around the 9th, I'll probably feel it lift again. But also I just know myself, so I know that this is probably how it's going to happen for me. But I could be pleasantly surprised as well. I try to keep open, so... Um, hmm. I am not seeing any questions just yet. Hey, Olivia, thanks for being here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and answer another anonymous question. Um, and just to remind you guys how this works once again, if you're new here, um, if you have a question at all about anything, psychic, metaphysics, mental health, yada, yada, pop it in the comment box and I will get to it. All right, let's see what the next one is here. Mm. Okay. Um, is it normal to be struggling emotionally while going through shadow work? I have never felt emotional imbalance like this before, and I struggle with depression and anxiety all of my life. Um, so the quick answer to that is yes, absolutely. Um, someone asked a couple Q and A's ago, how do I know that I'm doing sh shadow work? And I think my answer was, um, you feel incredibly uncomfortable <laughs> because that's what shadow work is. You're literally looking at your discomforts. You're looking at what makes you feel totally and utterly ashamed of yourself a lot of the time or embarrassed or confused or like who even is that person I don't like that part of myself I don't want to be that part of myself and it could be an inherent personality trait it could be something passed down ancestrally it could be something you're carrying in from a past life it could be an environmental imposition that you've developed a certain way because of your environment um, and, and so many other things, like there are so many other ways that this can manifest. And so it's really shadow work is just kind of picking yourself apart essentially. And so, yeah, that's going to make you feel uncomfortable. Um, and so that's why it's important when doing shadow work to just go super slowly and be really gentle with yourself and hopefully have somebody who's there scaffolding you, um, who you can talk to, who can mentor you or guide you um, through the shadow work that you're doing. Um, hey, Lexi, good to see ya. Um, so yeah, basically, that's what's up. Hi, Ruth, thanks for being here. Hey, Becky. Um, I see your question, I'll get to it. So yes, um, essentially extremely uncomfortable, but it, it is going to help with that depression, with the, the anxiety to be working alongside somebody else, whether that's monthly or weekly or bi-weekly or whatever it is. Um, also keeping a journal can be incredibly helpful. Um, and I personally, like, I love keeping my written, my handwritten journal, but way more often, um, than that, um, I tend to keep a voice recording journal. So on my phone, I just use the voice memos app and it is the best thing that's ever happened in my life. Um, especially like if you're walking around, people just think you're on the phone. So they don't think you're crazy talking to yourself. Um, not that there'd be anything wrong with just walking around talking to yourself, but also you have this cool recording then, um, so that it's logged. Um, and it's just so helpful personally for me and for a lot of my clients and, 
um, colleagues to just like verbally be able to process um, and know that there's no judgment because you're literally just talking to yourself unless you're judging yourself and then you can talk through that boom shadow work done um so yeah keeping some sort of log can be really helpful um and also flower essences are just a really beautiful thing to work with um and if you don't know what that is um i i'm going to share an article about that really soon not that i wrote but that somebody else shared with me and i'm grateful to that person for sharing that article because it's really really good so i'll be posting that to the doorway to self page um probably in the next couple days so keep your eyes peeled for that okie dokie let's see um oh also uh to this person i uh i really hope that things uh, get better for you. And in fact, I know that if you're doing this work, cause a lot of you are probably watching this going, why the hell would you do something so uncomfortable? And the answer is that the other side of it is so rewarding and so worth it. And, um, so really why not, <laughs> why not do it? The discomfort is just worth it. Um, so I know the anxiety and depression you're feeling right now are something fierce. Um, and I truly feel for you. Um, but just know that there is a light at the end of the tunnel um, and, uh, you're going to find a really, really greater version of yourself on the other side of that door. So uh, I just wanted to give you that encouragement as well. And that's not just for the person who asked this question. That's for anybody who's going through that as well. So, um, Becky says, I've been seeing a new numerology sequence for me lately. One, two, three, four. Though I haven't looked into the meaning yet, if I see numerology signs, it's usually different numbers. I'd appreciate your insight. Thank you. Um, I love that. So, mm. so um, in numerology, when we see a sequence of numbers that are ascending, it usually means that we are being led up to something. So things are kind of peaking for us. Um, not to say that you're like in the peak of your life or anything like that, but the point is, is that we are being guided up, right? So it's like, it's basically a sign of keep going, keep, keep doing what you're doing. More is coming, more is along the way. In terms of one, two, three, four, I mean, that's the very beginning of a numerology or, or, or of the number sequence in general, right? Like one other than zero is the first number. So we're literally, it's literally saying you are starting from the beginning or have started from the beginning and you are building up uh, from the beginning. And so even though it feels raw right now or confusing or maybe you don't really understand why you're doing what you're doing, just know it's leading you somewhere. Um, so I hope that's helpful to you. <laughs> um, it is a cool sequence. I do like that one. Um, Michelle says, I have been definitely feeling it in waves, but it has been stronger than ever before for me. Do you think that is because of the major energy shift on top of the Mercury retrograde? Um, yes. Yes. <laughs> um, yes. <laughs> I don't really know how, how else to answer that. But yeah, we've, we've been having some pretty huge energy shifts in the last, like, I don't really like right before 2020 started um, up until this point and they just keep becoming more and more and more and like it's like the world is just like it's had enough of people taking their time ascending and so it's like let's just enlighten everybody like all at the same time right away right now so um, it's pretty cool so thank you yes professionally just what I needed to hear thanks you're welcome Becky um you're welcome. I'm glad that was helpful to you. Okay. Um, so Michelle, actually your question is a really great segue into the very last one that was asked anonymously, which is I've been seeing in quotes, a lot of things lately. It feels like they are good and protective, but how do I know for sure? And why am I seeing so much? And so my answer to that, um, also, uh, five points to anybody who can name the psychic sense that this person is using. Um, she's seeing things. It's your big hint. Which Claire is it? Um, so firstly, I, uh, want to just jump off of exactly what Michelle was just speaking to and, and what, um, 
what I was just speaking to in my answer to you as or to, to her, to you, to Michelle. <laughs> wow. Mercury retrograde, tongue tied, dumb. <laughs> hmm. So, um, yeah. So if you are experiencing your psychic senses on heights and this can go for sight, this can go for my clear audience. My hearing has been off the charts for the last like two weeks um and I know my partner's has as well like just like weird stuff um but like it can it can literally be any psychic sense like if you're feeling it super super heightened um kind of like uh almost like you've turned up the volume knob on your psych psychic senses and you're like what is happening right now um there are just so many shifts happening right now and it's important to be aware of that. Um, and it's, and I'm not talking just planetary. I'm not talking just numerologically. I'm talking about the overall energy frequencies that are happening right now. More and more people are becoming awake and aware. And what that means is that there need to be more and more people to guide them and more and more people to normalize it. Now, I'm not saying go out and become a practitioner just because you have psychic senses. Everyone has psychic senses. It's just some are more magnetized than others. Um, or excuse me, magnified. I don't know why I said magnetized. Um, and um, Jesse says clairvoyance. Yep, bingo, five points. Boom, boom, boom. Um, clairvoyance, psychic sight. So, um, yeah, the point is, is that this isn't necessarily a sign that you need to go out and become a teacher. It could be. It's not necessarily, though. Um, it's more a sign of, like, you are here to help normalize this. You are here to help take the stigma away from psychic experiences so that other people who are just experiencing them for the first time can be like, oh, you, you had that happen to you? I haven't been able to talk to anybody about that before because I thought they'd think I was crazy and stick me in a mental hospital or something, um, which is why I do what I do because that happens way more often than not. Um, but, uh, you know, the point is, is that if your stuff is happening off the charts, um, know that it's happening because of this because you're, you're helping people, um, by normalizing it for yourself, you're helping other people to normalize it for themselves, A, and B, it's really hard to question whether or not you're experiencing something psychically if it's like blaring, right? So if you also, if you're somebody who has been questioning your psychic abilities or you're like, maybe I'm making this up or like, you know, whatever that human thing is to just kind of like dismiss and make logic out of something, um, there's no way to dismiss some of these signs that you might be getting. And so that's also why this is happening because it's like on steroids. And so there's zero way to ignore it. There's n zero way to make logic out of it. There's zero way to be like, this is not happening or this is happening because X, Y, Z thing that I can fit into this little box. Right. Um, so also that. Um, the other part of this person's question was about like, how do I know if these entities that I'm seeing are protective or not? Really cool thing. Um, this person actually, I wish I could show it to you if it wasn't like anonymous. Maybe I'll have to ask her if I can share it. Um, but she actually sent me a video from their surveillance camera outside and there were like all of these shooting orbs that were like going in front of it. I was like, oh, so cool. It was like five minutes long of just like 20 orbs. Um, but the point is, is like, she sends it to me. She was like, what's going on? Should I be freaking out right now? I feel like they're good, but I'm not sure, and blah, blah, blah. Um, and I was like, no, like they're definitely good. A, because I felt like they were good, but B, because she was very convinced that she felt like they were good. And so the point is, is like, trust your intuition on that. and. Um, firstly, know thyself, right? So this is where we can kind of get into some sticky territory because as somebody who's experienced some severe psychic abuse and attack, um, and I know that some of you watching this right now have also, um, likely experienced severe uh, psychic abuse or attack, or at least some form of non-severe attack, um, it can be really, really hard to trust. 
Um, and especially like non-physical form beings, it can be really, really hard to trust. Um, and so, like I said, know yourself, right? If you know what your energy is and you're in your energy, there's going to be less of a chance that the entities are going to be able to confuse you or manipulate you or anything like that. Um, and also... If you're tapped into yourself, you'll be able to tap into that gut feeling, into that intuition. Um, And if you have claircognizance, that like immediate gut feeling, it it obviously makes it much easier. But, um, you know, your gut knows. Yeah. Um, Let's see. Michelle says, funny you say that. I did quit my corporate job to start my own business. Congratulations. I've been working on this for a long time. Yeah, I'm sure. It it takes a lot of work. It really does. I hear you. Congratulations. It's amazing. Hi, Jenny. Bobby says, so good to hear this. More things coming to me and hope to be part of normalizing and helping others to find their light. Yeah, totally, totally, totally. For sure. Awesome. Oh, it's so exciting. Okay. Let's see. I'm not seeing any other questions at this time. Um, So something that I do want to make you guys aware of, and then um, if other questions come in, I'll answer them. Um, You're welcome, Michelle. (laughs) I'm really excited for you. Um, If other questions come in, I'll answer them. um, And if not, then I'll go ahead and pull our card for March. But um, for the whole month overall, like what do we need to do um, or what do we need to know? Maybe it is what we need to do. Um, but something I want to just, a uh, couple couple announcements here that are just super exciting. Um, so thing one, um, and those of you who receive my n- email newsletter already know this, but um, the event that I did last year in May for National Mental Health Awareness Month um, is having its second annual debut this year again and tickets are now on sale so if you go to doorwaytoself.com there's a little bar that pops up across the top and you can click it and you will learn all about the event it's called doorway to mental health um it's two days it's not overnight it's right here in grand rapids at the remedy house um which is just such an awesome freaking space and um day one is all going to be like lecture style workshops um and it's just so awesome (laughs) it's such an awesome vibe um and you can come to all of the workshops that are going before that day um or you can come to just one or two um lunch is also served and um if you do come to all the workshops lunch is included in your day ticket as well so that's pretty cool um, we'll be doing stuff like Sick Because Psychic, um, which is all about like how psychic abilities might manifest as mental illness and vice versa, and like how we can help to destigmatize both of those things to make mental health healing easier and yada yada. Um, and we'll have a bit of um, group discussion about that as well. And it's just an awesome class. Um, so we'll be doing that. We'll be doing... Um, uh, oh my gosh, so many things. We'll be doing um, the four elements uh, and mental health and kind of how connecting to earth, air, fire, water, within and without can actually help to raise your vibration, help to uh, heal anxiety, depression, um, major mental illnesses, yada, yada. Um, also really cool. Um, and we'll be talking about like how to have different practices with all four of those, things like that. Um, we're doing, um, the energy of addiction, um, which is new this year. And actually, so is that four elements one, but the energy of addiction is also new year, new this year. And, um, I'm particularly excited about this one because I've been, uh, doing my counseling internship in an addiction facility, inpatient and outpatient. Um, and I've actually been doing something similar to this workshop with, uh, with them as a group and, um, it's just really transformational and awesome to be able to see addiction through this lens. So 
excited about that, excited about astrology for mental health, which was a big hit last year, and I'm excited to do it again. Um, so all of those are happening Saturday, um, May 2nd, and then May 3rd is um, a journey, <laughs> and it's open to only four people for the entire day. There are no single class tickets for that one. It is literally like a cohort of four people who are all going to walk through that day together um, alongside me um, and uh, somebody who's completed the apprenticeship program as well. So it's just going to be a really lovely day. So if you want to um, check that information out, again, uh, doorwaytoself.com um, and that bar will pop up across the top and you can just click that. So you can also find it by going to the events tab as well. So all of that is there. Um, <laughs> and Jenny just announced the second thing that I was going to tell you guys about, which I'm super excited about. I'm excited too, Jenny. Thank you for saying this. She says, I can't wait for your podcast. And yes, <laughs> yes, you read that right. <laughs> If you're not on the email list, you haven't heard this announcement yet. So yes, on March 21st, um, which is actually also going to be the beginning of my Saturn return, which I'm really excited for, I am going to be launching the Doorway to Self podcast. So you can expect the very first episode that day. So excited about it. Um, and uh, it'll be on all platforms that I can think of. So um, whether you have Spotify or iTunes or Podbean or whatever, you'll be able to find it. So um, yeah, really excited about that. March 21st, mark your calendars. Um, that's fantastic. I have so many clients who are so empathic and struggle with anxiety. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, Jesse, I know I can't wait either for this podcast. I'm so excited. <laughs> so it's something that a lot of people have been asking for for a long time. And I've always felt like I've been way too busy to do it. Um, and it's never really felt like the right time. It's always felt forced. And finally, um, like the beginning of January, everything opened up and it was like, now, now is the time. And I so clearly heard and saw at the exact same time, Claire Audience Clairvoyance, March 21st that's when it's happening. So, um, yeah. Um, funny thing is I didn't actually know Saturn was shifting signs that day until I was like, oh, it's the equinox. And then I looked up the dates and I was like, the equinox is on the 19th. Like why, why the 21st? And I was like, Ooh, <laughs> test <laughs> the first test of my Saturn return. <sighs> so, um, yeah. That's what's going on. Um, and then also March 16th, I've been invited to do a masterclass um, with Witches T. Saginaw on Facebook. So um, if you guys want to check that out, it's totally free. Um, and it's actually really an awesome page, Witches T. Saginaw and also Witches T. Flint. Um, they do uh, masterclasses on there like every week almost um, and sometimes multiple times a week for free. And it's cool <laughs> and they bring on like random people to teach um about everything and anything so like um like i watched one that was about how to use roots for manifestation so this person came on with like potatoes and beets and celery and like all of this stuff and was teaching about every single one and it was cool um there's that and there's been stuff about like how to I don't know there's just everything so just go check it out but the one I'm doing is about how to do vocal sound healing um so for those of you who sorry about that Instagram somebody was calling me I forgot to turn my cell phone off so uh, I apologize for that pause um anywho yes those of you who have attended workshops where I've done vocal sound healing, um, which is also some, you, something you'll experience on day two of Dory to Mental Health, <laughs> just in case you're thinking about being one of those four people that special day. Um, but I digress. Um, whether you've experienced there or if you've experienced it on one of these Facebook or Instagram lives, Q&A or otherwise, um, and you've been curious about how I do... Um, the vocal sound healing techniques or why it works or what's happening when I'm doing it or anything like that, um, everything's going to be answered in this video. So 
Um, and it is live interaction on Facebook as well. So you're welcome to ask that. I'll do a little portion of Q&A as well on there. So you can ask your questions about it too. Hey, Suzanne, thanks for being here. Um, which is T sounds amazing. Your vocal sound healing is the best. Thank you so much for saying that, Jesse. I really, really, really enjoy doing it. It's one of my favorite things I do. So, um, yeah. And yeah, which is <laughs> is awesome. <laughs> They're just an awesome group. And, um, Vicki Vaughn who runs it is, um, just this incredible human being. And she makes all of these amazing magical teas. She like infuses all of the leaves with, I don't, I don't even know. I'm just blown away by her and everything she does. So, um, anyways, she didn't ask me to say that. I just genuinely feel this way about her. <laughs> um, so those are all the announcements. Woohoo! <laughs> Exciting things. Um, so... Whew, that was a lot. <laughs> um, I don't have a date yet for April just because I've been working like a horse trying to get all of this other stuff in line um, for this month. So I will let you guys know when the next Q&A is and the best way to know is by signing up for the email. Um, DoryToSelf.com, thing will pop up, put your email in and boom, you get the monthly newsletter. Um, and I try not to email you more than twice a month. I do it every time there's an article which is twice a month so um okay so um i am going to go ahead since i'm not seeing any other questions uh everybody's saying yay yay <laughs> um and i'm gonna go ahead and pull another card from wild wisdom of the fairies for the month of March, what do we need to know? Oh, and she flies out. This is my favorite card in the whole deck. Um, glimpse. Indigo, rainbow, crystal children, and beyond. Hmm. I'm trying to show you the whole card. It's not working. <laughs> glimpse. Hmm. So what we need to know for the month of March is, um, again, normally these cards aren't so packed with like heavy information. This is really interesting. Normally it's like a boom, there's your answer. Um, so I don't know why they're being super deep today, but they are. Um, so a couple things here. One is trust your intuition. That's what you need to know overall this month. It, well, it goes beyond that. Trust your intuition and trust your magic. That's what it is. Trust your magic. Trust your knowing. Trust your gut. Trust your ability overall. Um, ooh, this is just so much coming in. Um, trust that for yourself and also trust it in other people. Um, so make sure to take your ego out of the equation when you are interacting with others. And I know that's a big statement to make. I know that that's not easy to do. Um, but that, yeah, that's just what this card is saying is just trust the magic in everybody that you interact with this month and, and beyond that as well. Um, you know, just in life in general, trust that we all have the ability to have ability. <laughs> um, so there's that, but also the message here is to push yourself a little bit, push your limits, um, push your limits of what your beliefs are, push your limits of what can and can't happen. Um, in terms of like what is reality, right? Um, things like that. Um, and connect. I'm getting a lot of connection here. Connect with people. Connect with like-minded people if you can find them. And I'll tell you what, I know a lot of you on here right now, most of you are on here from Grand Rapids or the Ann Arbor area. Um, and both of those areas are chock full of like-minded people. Um, in both areas, I've definitely had classes max out with like 30 people or more, and that's plenty of like-minded people to be, um, chilling with. So, um, 
It's a big card. <laughs> it's really heavy. Um, and beautiful. And just trust that what's coming from up there needs to be grounded here. Um, that whatever is flowing through you and being channeled through you has a place on earth. Um, that you're not, well, you're not weird, you're weird, right? You're not weird in the negative sense. You're weird in the sense of where the word actually came from, which is Old English, W-Y-R-D, weird, and it means pool or web of fate. You are weird, you are fate, and you are fated to be here and to bring the information that you have here. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. So, that's what we need to know for March. Okay? Um... Woo, <laughs> this is calling me to draw it. <laughs> yes, Bobby, I would love that. You can definitely share that with me, too, if you want to. Okay, guys. Um... So, I think that's all. For now, uh, I know we're a couple minutes early here, but I'm not seeing any, woo, mouse freaking out. I'm not seeing any other questions coming in. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's been a day. <laughs> mm. It's been a heavy shadow work day, so I'm gonna like, I don't know what to expect right now. Let's see. Um... You know, I actually have tons of questions. I just can't think of any right now. That's totally cool, Judy. <laughs> I hear you. Um, and if you ever do think of a question, this goes for anyone, you're always welcome to email it to me or DM or PM, and I will answer it in the next Q&A. And you can just let me know if you want it to be asked anonymously or not, but um, just so that you can have them ready to go. Um, I love these. Thank you so much. You're so welcome, Jesse. Uh, okay. Well, I'm going to wrap up for tonight. Um, I'm sending all of you so much love. And I wish you all the most amazing March. Um, and by the way, also, I felt pulled to tell you, too, that today is the first quarter moon as well. So if you're somebody who doesn't follow the moon phases, probably should check it out because uh, you might notice a pattern with your own emotional and energy cycles as well. So that's pretty cool. So if you don't know what that means, it means that the moon is uh, progressing to fullness and it'll be full next week. Um, right now it looks like that that D, the capital D in the sky. So um, anyways, just wanted to share that with you. So, uh, Spirit asked me to share that before I started the live and I forgot. So, um... You're so welcome, Jesse. I'm oh, I'm glad to hear that card resonated with you, Michelle. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, what is going on today? Me and my family have been so off. Yeah, Becky. I hear ya. Um, yeah. It's I mean, there's just there's a lot right now. There's a lot, lot shifting, lot happening. Um, and also I didn't put this in the article and I haven't, but I haven't been putting them and I don't plan to, but any two day um so the second of any month, I've included the 22nd, but the second or the 20th of every month as well is going to be a portal day this year just because it's 2020. So um, just some extra struggle maybe with learning how to balance today um, or working with centering, um, being thrown off center, uh, things like that. And especially in the face of transition, transformation, being able to communicate, creativity, things kind of taken the wrong way. And of course, Mercury retrogrades happening at the same time. So that doesn't really help matters there as well. So um, I don't know if that's helpful to you at all, but um, that that is going on as well. So um, maybe keep that in mind too. So anyways, regardless, I love you all. I'm sending you all love. Um, and the next Q&A will be at some point in April. I will have the event up on Facebook probably in the next couple weeks um, and uh, hopefully next week. And um, it'll also go out in the April newsletter as well. So again, if you're not signed up for those, um, be sure to do that, DoryToSelf.com. And the thing will pop up. It'll say subscribe. You put your email in and blah, blah, blah. Um, so cool. 
Um, uh, okay, Instagram's going to kick me off here, but Janine, I see your question. I'm going to answer it really quickly for you. So Instagram, if we cut out, know that I love you, and you can find the rest of the answer to this next question on YouTube after I post it. Cool. Um, what exactly do you mean by a portal day? I hear that often, but what should we do for a portal day to make the most of it? Um, so, um, hold on one second. Sorry, Instagram's wigging out, so I want to make sure to do a thing. Okay, cool. So, um, <laughs> balance. Juggling. Um, so basically a portal day means, uh, when the energy is extremely accessible okay so this is when the veil so to speak between our physical world and the energy world is thin so it means that we can access information more easily we can uh, recognize what's going on energetically more more easily and when we do energy work, it can be more potent. So we can find portal days in many different forms. Um, when I taught, when I was talking about it just now specifically, um, and when I write about it in my articles, it's always in reference to numerological portal days. So this is when we have a repeating sequence of numbers. Okay, so 2020 is a portal year because um, it's 2020, and it's actually the angelic number of um, assisted balance. Uh, to find your place within and without in the universe. Kind of big. <laughs> I did a whole 2020 article, so you can check that out if you want to learn more about it. Um, hey, Becky, thanks for being here. Um, so, so yeah, th I mean, there can be numerological portal days. There can be astrological portal days. So any full, full moon or new moon would be a portal day. Some people consider the quarter moons to be a portal day. Some people just consider every day to be a portal day. Um, solar days like the equinoxes and solstices, um, or the if you're somebody who recognizes the eight wheels, the um, the eight spigots on the wheel of the year, so the four, the two equinoxes, two solstices, and then the four days in between all of those would be portal days. Um, any eclipse, um, your birthday would be a portal day. The first of the year, because we've made it that way, would be a portal day. Um, so I don't know if that's helpful to you at all, but that's pretty much what it means. So anyways, I'm going to leave you guys with that. That's a really good question, Janine. I'm glad you asked that. Thank you for that. Um, so here's what's going to happen is that um, some of you heard me talk about my Saturn return and maybe your Saturn return starting March 21st. If you don't know what that means, I'm going to be putting an article out about what a Saturn return is. And I actually did this the last time Saturn changed signs, but I'm going to just like make it for now um, so that it's relevant to what you might be going through. So anyways, um, you can expect that in the middle of the month. Um, and then, um, probably the day after that is going to be Witch's Tea. So March 16th, uh, Witch's Tea Saginaw, I'll be doing that live and then live master class for free. And then, um, March 21st, you can keep your eyes open for the podcast and May 2 and 3 is Dory to Mental Health. So tickets are in sale now, DoryToSelf.com. Go click on that gold bar on the top and, um, can't wait to see you there. You're welcome, Jenny. <laughs> and again, if you aren't already following me, Dory to Self on Facebook or Dor at Dory to Self on Instagram. And I will see you guys next month. I love you. Have a good night. <laughs>